Whether it's cooking, it is what it was for me, it could be, um, well, probably cooking. That's probably going to be what it is. So I've been making videos for a couple months now and having a lot of fun with it. But I'm not just doing it for these massive paychecks. One of the things that helps me make it through the night is having so many like-minded people in the comments who share their own recommendations for cool comedy that maybe I haven't heard of. To me, there's nothing quite like the feeling of discovering the next hidden gem you've been missing out on. A new offering of genius weirdo comedy speaking right to you. So I'm quite glad a kind sir recently recommended Henry's Kitchen to me. Hello, and welcome to Henry's Kitchen, where today we're going to be going to be making Henry's tuna fried rice. Given my fondness for awkward, dry, tragicomic, experimental internet rabbit holes, I'm saddened and ashamed to say that I'm about 12 years too late on this one. I wasn't really familiar with Henry Phillips beyond his very small but memorable role in Silicon Valley. Okay, let me show you the next location in which we would install one of your boxes. But better late than never, it was brought to my attention that I needed to wise up. Gotta wise up. But apparently there's much work to be done because the view count on some of these is downright criminal. After about three months, I think I had about 500 views. And then I think somebody must have shared it on their Facebook or something. And before you knew it, 500 became 1,000. And then 1,000 views became 1,200. And 1,200 views became 1,208. I see how mileage may vary with how dry it can be. Some of the confused comments on the Masterclass episodes he did on the Thrillist YouTube channel are probably a good indication. But it's such a uniquely well-executed and consistent vision that it deserves a whole lot more attention in my opinion. And yes, I know I discovered this like two months ago, but that's kind of my point. I only wish I'd been in on this sooner, with the clearly passionate fan base that has long formed an assembly line, if you will, to follow and support Henry for over a decade. But that aside, watching through all of this twice now was a joy. Well, a strange, very depressing kind of joy, but a joy nonetheless. The dedication is a astounding, and parts of this had me laughing harder than I have in a very, very long time. In short, it's funny as hell. The show itself is pretty simple in concept. It doesn't really spin out into some complex multimedia ARG in the same way something like On Cinema does. On Cinema begins as a simple, hilarious show about idiots reviewing movies that expands into a universe of craziness. Henry's Kitchen begins as a simple, hilarious show about an idiot cooking recipes, but rather than expanding too much into other characters, situations, or twists, mostly delves deeper inward into painting a clearer, ever sadder picture of this one specific guy, who 12 years on is still struggling to cook. Cooking is never easy, and it's never fun. But if it were, then they wouldn't call it cooking. So let's take it back to that for now, because the way he struggles to cook is just glorious. The first episode gives you a really good sense of the show, because he really came out with this character and concept fully formed on day one when he burned the shit out of his first ever recipe for French toast. Well, it definitely smells pretty crisp. Let's see, uh... Oh, shit. What the fuck? Mmm. Sometimes the bread's pretty good just by itself. One of the evergreen jokes that just never wears thin is Henry's all-encompassing incompetence. It seeps into every aspect of the production of this cooking show. It's just all wrong. Every dish he makes almost always comes out looking terrible. Almost every time he serves food to others in the show, they hate it. I think it came out pretty good. It's gross. Honey. It's gross. Here, take this nasty shit with you. <laughs> no? Ow! This tastes like shit! Not only is his kitchen always extremely messy, all of his equipment looks like he never cleans it. My tablespoon, which as you can see, I mostly use for coffee. Sometimes I'll have to clean it. You're constantly nervous he's gonna cut himself as he fumbles around with these tiny, dull knives. And his misuse of equipment certainly doesn't end there. One of these European-style strainers here. He's often clearly unfamiliar with or mispronounces the names of ingredients. One box rosemary pricks, one box fresh parsley, one stone ground mustard paste, one cumin, one salt and pepper, one red pepper flakes, one uh, stroked pampika, one salt and pepper, one extra virgin olive oil, one egg, one bread, one of those, and then one pound of meat, and one parmesan, and one accini de pipi number 78, and some tomato puree. I don't see any here. I'm going to see if Bill has some common. Bill, do you have any common? He clearly has no idea what he's doing across the board. In one episode, you see him practicing how to put a peanut butter and jelly sandwich together in the mirror. You literally see him stop cooking and consult a YouTube video on how to make the recipe on which he's currently making a how-to YouTube video. The egg outside. Oh. 
I think there's some really interesting points raised about the nature of the internet here, but I'm going to let those lie because what I really love about this show is right there on the surface. It's all so well done and so funny. I think I laughed out loud every single time Henry dropped something and swore. The spoons are flat out. Gotta watch out for the fucking sparks. Shit, it's a little bit of cream. It's always just so perfectly timed and so deflating as he continues to try and pretend he knows what he's doing. Half a cup of powdered sugar. Fuck! It's genuinely amazing how hard he manages to make everything look. Just take a look at the episode in which he teaches us how to make a Big Mac at home. You know, the term special sauce was invented by a guy named Jim Delgatti back in 1967. And he had no idea that one day people all over the world would be laughing at that term. This one struck me for how every step was done in the weirdest, wrongest, most needlessly challenging way. So let's break this one down as an example. First, he makes one of the patties way bigger than the other one. Then he calls his pan a burner. It's got a lightly greased burner here. Before taking a break to sheepishly respond to whatever viewer is bullying him this week. I've noticed you've gained weight and gotten older since your earlier videos. And it also looks like you're losing your hair. We at Henry's Kitchen are definitely aware of this uh, problem and we're trying to fix it the best that we can. Then, referring to the top and bottom buns as the front and back buns, uses a dirty peanut butter lid and a sharpie to trace a circle instead of just using the lid to cut the shape. And you can use any kind of peanut butter you want. Then, of course, adds the extra step of cutting the circle with scissors. You want to make sure you get all of that ink off because that definitely will kill you. Next, he uses a whole block of butter to butter the buns and adds these ridiculous uneven cheese slices onto these sickly looking and unevenly sized patties. Then he starts cutting a skin still on onion with a tiny knife on a paper plate and cutting a pickle into giant pieces. Funny how many people will go to McDonald's and spend who knows how much money on a Big Mac when they can just make it at home. People are so stupid. The assembly of this monstrosity with the sad music playing behind it is some kind of haunting work of art that I can't really explain. But this whole video had me laughing so hard simply for how preposterously and stupidly it was performed. Funny, that actually looks pretty good all of a sudden. The cooking in itself is all absurd, but I find it so funny that this series is stretched over 12 years and Henry never changes, hardly learns a thing. It just keeps on going. There are changes here and there, sure, he gets a new sign, cooks in new places, he gets a cat named Roast Beef that he incorporates into the show, but his incompetence remains a hilarious constant. One thing that hasn't changed a bit is the editing style. Hello. I'm a huge fan of the use of bad editing in comedy. When the timing and the intention is dialed in, it can lead to such hilariously janky content. Okay, now uh, what we're gonna go. Now we're gonna add some of our ingredients. Henry has been using the same awful, garish iMovie template with these insane, distracting transitions since the very beginning. He constantly either leaves way too much time at the end of his sentences. Let's put some shrimp on the Barbie and get this party started. or cuts himself off mid- And then later in the 16th century, Henry V. Well, let's get started. My favorite cuts are when he begins to- my favorite cuts are when he begins to say something and it cuts to him repeating himself somewhere else. In every way, it's amateurish. I don't want any part of it to look amateurish. There's so many funny little editing details everywhere you look, like how the lower third pop-ups will often repeat his strange specific phrasing. All of the technical aspects of the show are just so wonky. The camera work is all over the place. I don't have a tripod, but I can use, uh, I have shelves here full of strange, awkward angles and bad lighting. The sound is often too quiet or blown out, and he often won't account for the loudness of his appliances when he's talking, which made me laugh every time. So the next day when the guy goes to pick up his cake, he notices the But of course, none of this would have the personal context that allows it to be so damn funny if it weren't for how hilarious the acting style is. The character is extremely awkward and speaks in such a dry, timid way. Awkward is the magic word, really. It's one of the most awkward performances I've ever seen, and I mean that in the best way possible. Hello, and welcome to Henry's Kitchen, where today we're going to be making... It's my birthday, so today we're going to be making Henry's birthday pork chop with broccoli rabe pea stew and a honey ricotta cheesecake for one. He's constantly alternating between this weird formal facade and then just throwing in casual swearing that feels so weirdly out of place. Don't let the sleek design fool you. This is probably the baddest piece of equipment in your whole fucking kitchen. And then we're going to pour over this other shit. It gives the sense that in these moments his care just lapses completely. Okay guys, enough of this shit. Let's put these pupusas on the griddle. 
At times, he actually seems like he might be legitimately crazy, because he swings from these long, uninteresting explanations of the food he's cooking to these really strange and dark anecdotes that have no connection to what he's doing. Stepchildren are often abused or sometimes even abandoned. He'll go on about the origins of whatever dish he's cooking in the most uncharismatic way imaginable. The modern chicken, as we know it today, is actually a descendant of the red jungle fowl. Hybrids along with the gray jungle fowl first raised thousands of years ago in the northern parts of the Indian subcontinent. It's always these hilarious facts that would sound like total bullshit, but are all the same so uninteresting that you wouldn't really bother to look them up. What I'll do is I'll go to Wikipedia and try to find out what the actual terms mean. The Scotch egg claims to have been invented by the London department store Fortnum and Mason in 1732, but was most likely inspired by the Moghul dish Nargisi Kofta Narcissus meatballs. Then as he's struggling with some piece of equipment or doing some task in a strange way, he'll throw out these bizarre tidbits that catch you off guard and leave you wondering if he's okay. According to the World Health Organization, more than 200 Canadian men die each year trying to pee over the side of their boat while they're intoxicated. But the attitude that makes me laugh most in all of this is the way he tries to make what he's doing sound so much more important or difficult. If he's doing something simple that literally anyone could figure out, he'll use these words or describe things in ways that suggest some sort of special expertise where absolutely none is needed. Basting's a pretty straightforward straightforward process. You just basically dip your brush in some barbecue sauce and literally just start basting it. You could put other stuff in there uh, as you get better at it. And while we bring that to a boil, let's just flip our meatballs over using a basic flipping technique. You know, it's just like anything else. You got to put in your 10,000 hours. In this way, I couldn't escape the comparison to another culinary comedy show that I adore, Tim's Kitchen Tips. I know Henry's Kitchen came first and is the more fleshed out version of a somewhat similar concept, but one of my favorite parts of both shows is this constant over explanation of simple things. But as you keep watching Henry's Kitchen, it becomes a little more interesting than all of that. Henry can't cook. He does things in strange ways. He pronounces things wrong. Some cumin. Add the barganzos. Crab rangon. His editing is atrocious. He swears randomly. Fuck. Tells little strange stories out of nowhere. But where the joke goes deeper is how it lets you in little by little on why. We start to see who Henry is behind the recipes. If you have a really good saute pan, you don't need somebody to share your life with. It's revealed that Henry started this cooking show at his lowest point, in a deep depression after a breakup and a bender. I was going through a particularly bad breakup at the time. In general, I was just kind of hitting a rock bottom and I was drinking a lot. I still drink a lot. He's constantly making these little cries for help and talking about how lonely he is. The other night I invited some friends over to test out this recipe and it was a huge success. My friends never showed up, but it came out delicious. His episode titled Valentine's Day Stroganoff for One is a particularly heartbreaking snapshot. It's not just anecdotal. We really see and feel Henry's loneliness throughout the show. He lists his house on Airbnb and often has people showing up for a place to sleep. Anytime this happens, he tries to bond with them by interviewing them and trying to involve them in the cook in some way. It's an obvious, desperate plea for human interaction, as obviously his house isn't set up to be an Airbnb, and the guests are always surprised when he shows them to the closet in his room. Is this where we're sleeping? Um, no, actually, that's my bed. You're gonna be, I put you in here. I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't even charging these people, given this one guy seems to maybe be homeless. It's what makes this show so sad at times. You really feel how lonely he is in every aspect of the production of these videos, from his sad stories and comments. You know, the thing about crippling depression is that it really makes you so that you don't want to do anything. The mess he sets in the background from his eponymous kitchen to his insane bedroom, down to the way he sets his tiny table for one, and the clips and photos he adds into his edits. The show can be enjoyed as a simple comedy series, but there are many places you can look to find evidence of the sadness behind it all. The dedications in his two cookbooks, which, yes, I bought, go out to people for whom cooking has saved their lives as it did his, as well as chefs of all ages suffering from severe loneliness. Every page you flip to has some incredibly sad quote in large, colorful letters. When I was 15, my high school sweetheart broke up with me, and I remember thinking that my whole life was ruined. Guess I was right. I've been so busy cooking that I didn't even get one call from any friends or family during the holidays. I think maybe one more day of rest and I should be back to my old self, which wasn't really that great either, I guess. But he tries so hard to connect to people, which makes it all the more heartbreaking when everyone around him is just so mean to him. Why don't you get the fuck out, out of my house? In one episode, he literally hires a DJ for a party that nobody is coming to just so he can hang out with the DJ guy. Sure enough, the DJ guy is also incredibly mean to him. Nobody's coming to your shit ass party. Well, um, I think people are gonna show up. Nobody's gonna show up. 
In one of my favorite episodes, he gets a date with Nikki Glazer, of all people, and instead of taking her out, he films her while he makes her sushi. He makes it clear how much he needs this to go well, and it's simultaneously so sad and so funny when, while he's trying so hard, everything goes so disastrously wrong and she leaves him. It may be digging too deep, but after learning all of this, after understanding the character and what he was going through when he started to make cooking videos, it recontextualizes some of the more random jokes. Some of the more unbelievable aspects of this character's behavior of the world that feel initially at times incongruous sort of fall into place as you learn more. For example, in the very first episode, Henry does his first signature bizarre anecdotal non sequitur, and it's a very weird dark one. A common practice in the Middle Ages um, was that if a woman wasn't married by the time she was 20 years old, um, that was seen as a crime against religion, and then I guess um, she would be beaten into submission or sometimes even tortured or even executed. On the first wash, you just laugh at how he's cutting bread for French toast, and then his mind skips to a truly horrible thought about how unmarried women were treated in the Middle Ages. On the second watch, after knowing that Henry made this video because he was going through a difficult breakup, that tangent feels much more personal, as though in his very first video he needed to throw in a jab at his ex. An even better example pertains to a key element of the show that I haven't really mentioned yet. There's something broken inside of me, something no one else can see. Something hurts and it's way down deep I think there's something wrong the most on-the-nose and overtly comedic part of all of this is something that I actually wasn't so fond of at first, but it grew on me to the point that I wouldn't have it any other way now. Put another shrimp on the Barbie friend, and I'll be there to greet you. Ro -ho -skindy -doo. In the first episode, a tradition is created in which any time Henry has to wait for a cooking process to be done, we get some harrowing glimpses of his life outside the kitchen as sad dramatic music plays. In later episodes, these sections begin to feature original songs from an artist I suppose I should refer to as Jose on Alivio for the purposes of YouTube ad suitability. These songs are amazing as parodies of the saddest music imaginable. So world of love that I'll never live in Crying all alone in my kitchen A few of them are straight up some of the funniest comedy songs I've ever heard. She is the whore of Sausalito But in terms of overall cohesion, it felt kind of out of place for me with what I initially understood the show to be. Henry's Kitchen is never too far concerned with the world continuity and reality, which works for what it is, but, and this may just be me, there was something off about these really overtly comedic songs mixed with the dryly realistic presentation. It caught me off guard a little at first. Just as learning about Henry's breakup recontextualizes certain lines from earlier episodes, there's a really strange episode of Henry's Kitchen that does the same for the music. The episode features Henry in a ridiculous rocker outfit talking about guitar theory. We're gonna be talking about the pentatonic scale and how you can apply various uh, quintuplet and sextuplet patterns. Surprisingly, he actually starts absolutely shredding. <laughs> I was so caught off guard because all I had known this man to be was bad at absolutely everything. Hilariously, the smoke alarm starts blaring and we cut back to Henry in his kitchen, sleeping and dreaming about being a musician while he's burning the food he's trying to cook. This confirms Henry's aspirations to be a successful songwriter. Jose Suicidio is uh, a music artist, which is actually sort of my alter ego. I've always wanted to be a musician and that's a tough gig. It shows that while he's cooking, what he really wants to share is music, which makes sense why he's essentially leaving room for these little music videos in his cooking videos where he can deliver his sad music Trojan horse style. Again, I know I'm digging too deep. The songs are just great and hilarious and depressing, but I find it becomes even funnier when you connect the dots. There's another really weird episode earlier in the series that I gather was probably intended as the ending initially, where Henry is drinking alone in a bar on his birthday and everyone starts recognizing him as his musician alter ego. Jose Suicidio? Yeah. yeah! We played that song at my father's funeral. I lost my virginity to that song crowding him and praising his music until he gets a contract to write songs for Justin Bieber. Oh, really? How would you like to write some music for Justin Bieber? Oh, yeah. I love your music and everyone seems The way I like to justify it looking back is that this episode is another dream or fantasy where the music he has been writing actually becomes successful and takes him away from his regular life. Of course, even his fantasy ends with no one ever seeing him again all of a sudden, so I guess even his literal dreams don't totally work out for him, but anyways, I always do this and overanalyze, but hey, I liked this show a lot, okay? Like I said earlier, I'm bummed I didn't know about this sooner and I really do think this should be more widely appreciated. Making something so hilariously bad really is an art that not everyone can do. There's a massive difference between just random shoddiness for the sake of it and a well-crafted, specific, comedic vision of terribleness. The gold standard of which for me being the Our Cinema Oscar special. I enjoyed Trolls. 
Uh, I'll be getting to that on this channel, believe me. But Henry's Kitchen struck me right away as existing in that space where every last detail is wrong, everything's so perfectly bad, while remaining really loose and not too closely bound to the sad reality it jokingly portrays. There's a ton packed into this, a ton of surprises that I didn't spoil, so I really encourage you to go watch this for yourself if you haven't. And if you have, it's time to go watch it again. It's sad and awkward and funny and weird in all the right ways that make it a really compelling watch and make it a very, very strong recommendation from me. I guess I'm just not interesting. I have no personality. I met a guy with cancer and he felt sorry for me.